Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sovar and welcome to another AGK 2.0 tutorial. And today we're going to go over three-dimensional objects along with a little bit better of um, inputs, which is uh, the raw key set, <coughs> or key state I meant. Um, so today, well, I already said that, so let's move on to the commands. It's a little bit late, so yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, so we have a new command here called set camera position. Now when you are actually referencing the camera, it is what you see on the screen as yourself, as like basically um, where you are looking and it's where you are in the three-dimensional world. Consider the camera yourself and what you're seeing. So when we set the position, it is the X, Y, and Z. Now the differences between sprites and three-dimensional objects is that three-dimensional objects have the Z coordinate in it, while the two-dimensional objects only have the X and Y coordinate. You can have a mixture of sprites and three-dimensional objects. The sprites are acting as two-dimensional objects that are only attached to the screen, while three-dimensional objects are in a three-dimensional world. So the setting the position of the camera would be 100x, 100y, and 100z. Of course, I don't believe that there is multiple cameras supported. So for now, it's only one for the camera ID number. And so I decided to create a bunch of random objects, rotate them randomly, and position them randomly across this three-dimensional world to demonstrate some of the commands. <clears throat> so. I would hope by now you would know what a for loop looks like. You have the x coordinate or x variable equal to one and increments all the way to fifty through this loop. So moving on from that, we have a new command called random. Now I assume you probably know what random is, especially one and five. It is any integer randomly selected between one and five, which you would equal into a, a variable which is rnd, short for random. So we have an if statement that's slightly different than usual. We have a then after the if statement. If you only have one line of code after the if statement, instead of type it if ran equals one uh, return object equal create object box with all this along with a end if, it's a little bit redundant and a little bit more lines of code. So by e like here, let me show you how it would look like. So you know what I'm talking about. Oops. It would look like that for each one. It takes up more room. So by getting rid of the end if, and of course moving this up on one line of code, you can do this. But you need to have the then statement right there in order for to make it work. So now moving on from the if statement, uh, we have a variable called obj, which is basically uh, short for object, which is the identification number of the object being created here. Of course, we have a random variable, so if random equals one, two, three, four, or five, it will create each object. So we have a box object, a cone object, a sphere object, a plane, which is a two-dimensional object, similar to a sprite, but being placed in a three-dimensional world. The best way to explain how a plane works is basically the ground of the video game that you're walking on, or the world. Um, usually there's like different uh, meshes that would work as terrains, but uh, we're not going to get into that just now. So the plane is basically like a two-dimensional, three-dimensional object with uh, no depth. So that's why we have the uh, width and the height as that. Um, for the box, I believe it's width, height, and depth. Let me double check. Yep, width, height, and depth. Uh, it says length, but it's actually depth. So we also, we also have the cone, which is for the height di diameter, which is the actual um, circular part of the cone, and then the segments, which basically allow it to have the really high depth, high number of polygons, or low-level polygons based on how many segments you add to it. Same thing with the sphere. The sphere basically um, has, uh, let me see here, has diameter, which is the size of the sphere, how many rows and columns, 
the more rows and columns you have, again, more polygons and more high quality it is. I just explained what the plane is, and the cylinder is the height, diameter, and segments. Of course, segments make it more circular, which makes it more um, high depth, more polygons. Of course, you can control this based on the uh, rendering of the game and how good quality the game is. So, moving on, we have a X position and Z position. Now, the way that the axes work in a three-dimensional world in App Game Kit is that the Y is going up and down, the Z is going forward, and the X is going side to side. Now, of course, when you rotate the camera, the X and the Z can be skewed and not really knowing where the Z or the X is. But always assume that the Z is going forward and backwards, Y is going side to side, and Y is going up and down. So we have basically all these objects on the exact same level as the Y axis, which is 100, but randomly selecting from 1 to 1000 for the X position and the Z position of the object, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. Now I decided to rotate the object at random angles for the X, Y, and Z or angles. So, um, which would be 1 to 360. Now set object position is positioning the object in the X, Y, Z coordinates. Uh, of course with the uh, object identification number which is OBJ. And of course we have the random X which is the random variable generated for the X position. And same thing for random Z for the random Z position. Also we have the set object rotation which of course we have the object identification number the random angle x variable, the random angle y variable, and the random angle z variable, which is generated between 1 and 360. So we set the uh, camera rotation to 0, 0, 0, so everything is set up perfectly, um, so it's not tilted weird or anything like that. And then we have the loop. The loop again prints the screen frames per second and updates everything two-dimensional and three-dimensional through the sync command. So I'm only going to explain one of these lines of code and you can kind of understand the other ones. I'm going to briefly go through the other ones. But um, there's an if statement of get raw key state. Now getting a key state is basically selecting which key you've pressed on the keyboard um, primarily the get raw key state is only made for computers more so than mobile devices but um, the uh, the get raw key state will look for which key is pressed if this key is pressed then do something and of course instead of entering in uh, ASCII number which is ASCII the keyboard consists of numbers representing each key Instead of memorizing all the numbers or looking up a table, there's this function called ASC. And of course, you simply put in the, um, the letter of the key in here, and preferably in capitals as a string. So this would return the actual ASCII number of the keyboard, which if that key is pressed on the keyboard, then it would execute this function over here. So if W was pressed, it would move the camera along the local Z axis by two variables. And if you do S, it would be the opposite. So this would be moving forward and this would be moving backwards. Now, the reason why it's a local axis is because that's the actual local camera being moved. Um, so if you press A, it will rotate the global, the camera global Y axis, meaning that the local Z would not be affected by which area it's moving. Now it's a little confusing to explain the local and the global. Just say for now the rotation of the camera by turning left or turning right would be global and moving forward and backwards will be local. Because again I'll try to explain if you have a glo if you try to rotate locally it will only rotate the camera and then when you try to move it would be very skewed. And I guess I'll show an example of it because I tend to fail to um, explain it in words. So hopefully this all makes sense to you. I'm going to run the example right now as it is. And as you can see, an object literally just appeared right here. And let me move around. 
This is the plane, as you can see, it's like two dimensional with no depth, but it has the width and the height. Um, right here is a cylinder. Um, let me try to get a good view. It's very hard to see because there's no lines around it. You can just see the shape. There's a cone right there. And as you can see, these are all randomly rotated and positioned. And as I press the W, A, S, D keys, this is W, this is S, this is A, and this is D. Basically showing you how it works. Okay, so now when we exit out, I'm going to show you the example of what happens when you, whoops, when you rotate locally. So the y-axis is now local, along with moving on the local z-axis. Okay, so I can move back and forth perfectly, but when I turn, oh, okay then. I believe it actually does not affect that. I'm sorry, that's that's my fault. Um, for some reason, I'm not really for sure what would be the difference between local and global. I probably should have looked that up beforehand. But um, hopefully this was a good, I mean, a very good tutorial for three-dimensional objects. I know I kind of made that mistake at the very end with the global and local um, rotation of the cameras. I'll probably explain it in a later video. I kind of need to end this video right here. Um, I'll probably go over more three-dimensional commands along with in-app purchases, advertisements, shaders, multiplayer, and all sorts of other things. Please make sure to like the video and share the video. Also, subscribe to my channel. If you prefer to have um, a different video, specifically with App Game Kit, uh, make sure to comment on the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Mr. Sovar. See you later.